I didn't even know this existed. I'm so excited. But this is the UK cover. Look at the naked cover. Because of course, down the rabbit hole I went. Cocaine and champagne. <laughs> I just, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. For a lavish party in one of Edinburgh, in Ed but my mom was like, why are you looking outside when you have an unsolved murder in your own hometown? And I was like, what are you talking about? Sidebar, always a theme with Audrey's shopping. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. And welcome to another giant book haul. So I would like to say that my shopping has gotten into control, but it has not. But sort of the combination of pre-orders arriving and books that caught my attention and some great publisher books that were sent to me, which I'm super excited about and some gifted books and all of that fun stuff. So hunker down. I am going to really, really, really try to not dive too deep into what every book is about, but I make no promises. Let's haul some books, you guys. Okay, so we're starting at the top. This baby just came in. This is The Trap by Katherine Ryan Howard. This was one of my pre-orders. I love her books so very much. I'm so excited about this one. This is To Catch a Killer, She'll Become a Victim. So we had a bunch of women going missing and our main character, I think, because again, I'm trying to be minimal on what I read about my thrillers, is trying to find out what happened to her sister. And she is getting into cars with suspicious dudes to figure out if they're the ones who maybe took her sister. I am really, really interested in this and I am very excited about it. And I'm a huge fan of her writing and she is, I'm going to create one of those authors I want to read to zero videos and she is topping that list. So stay tuned for more. Very excited. I swear I will talk less. <laughs> the next one I have is The Hurricane Blonde by Hallie Sutton. So this is a book that I had kind of heard about and then when I saw Gare and Kate on Killing the Tea do a one-on-one -on -one with her and I heard all about this book, I was like, I, I must have this. I absolutely must have this. I can't wait any longer. So this one says, Hollywood loves a dead girl. She's always so photogenic. So in this one, I wanna say we have another sister situation. Yes, so in this one, we are following a woman named Selma and it says she understands better than anyone how Hollywood chews up and spits out its starlets. She's the offspring of Hollywood royalty, a former child star turned guide of a true crime bus tour, and sister to Tawny, dubbed the quote, Hurricane Blonde, who was murdered in the mid 90s. So the case was never solved. And then when another woman turns up dead with an uncanny resemblance to Tawny on the very property where her sister was killed, questions start to arise. So I've heard tremendous things about this one. I'm very excited about it. This is the UK cover in case you're wondering. I'm always shopping around for the cover that I love. Okay, next book. This was actually gifted to me from Berkeley. This is Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. So the paperback of this book came out this summer and I read Cackle, which I totally enjoyed. So I'm very intrigued to read more by her. I have fallen down on the job and I have not read more of her books. So this one is pitched as a dark comedic love story and a layered portrait of trauma, rage, and vulnerability. So we've got some full moon transformation happening here. So it says a young woman in need of a transformation finds herself in touch with the animal inside. So she winds up hitting an animal with her car one night and when she gets out to investigate the animal attacks her, she survives, but she starts to look and feel different. So I don't know if we're getting a werewolf story for real. I'm flashing back to Buffy for sure. So it says she's changing into something else, someone else, maybe even a monster. But does that mean she's putting those close to her in danger or is embracing the wildness inside her the key to acceptance? So again, I've heard some really fantastic things about this book. I've heard incredible things about her writing beyond Cackle, which I loved, loved, loved. So very excited, very grateful for that one. I treated myself to a lot of books. But I treated myself to this YA thriller, The Legacies by Jessica Goodman. So this is an Upper East Side boarding school, rich kids behaving badly, some of my favorite buzzwords in all of the world. I also love that there's blood splatter all over this cover. Oh, it's like the Gossip Girl vibes to it. So backstabbing, betrayal, and blackmail. So The Legacy Club is more than an honor to be extended an invitation into. It gives a lifetime access to power. It gives you a lifetime access to power, wealth beyond any prep school doors. So there's an event one night, the legacy ball, and you can bet that somebody is gonna get murdered and we're gonna need to find out who. So this will be my first Jessica Goodman book, but I've heard great things about it. I love the Gossip Girl vibes. I love the Upper East Side vibes. 
I love all the rich people doing all the bad things. I'm a sucker for it. I'm a sucker for it. Okay, next up. This is a very deep, I shopped internationally kind of a pile, just so you guys know. So the next book I have is The Other Half by Charlotte Vassal. So this has not come out in the US yet. I was eyeing it. I thought I could just bide my time and wait till the US release. And then I was like, no, 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 no. Let me just buy it now. Plus I love this cover. So this is rich adults behaving badly. <laughs> always a theme with Audrey's shopping. So this is you know how they live, this is how they die. So this is a debut, which I'm psyched about. So on this one, the night before is Rupert's 30th birthday. It's a black tie event and it says it's catered with cocaine and Vouve Clicquot. I always pronounce that champagne brand wrong, but if you know, you know. The morning after, his girlfriend Clemmie is found murdered on Hampstead Heath and all the partygoers have alibis, naturally. The investigation will be about classics degrees and aristocrats, Instagram influencers, and who knows who, or is it whom? Detective Caius Beauchamp isn't sure. My gosh, my words are not great. He's sharply dressed, smart, and as into self-improvement as Clemmy. But as he searches for the dark truth beneath the luxury, a wall of staggering wealth threatens to shut down his investigation before it's even begun. Can he see through the tangled set of relationships in which the other half live and die before the case is taken out of his hands? I'm very excited. Give me some rich people behaving badly on a 30th birthday. Cocaine and champagne. <laughs> I just, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Okay, next, finally a book that I've read. This is A Twisted Love Story by Samantha Downing. I had the e-arc of this. I pre-ordered it because she is one of my most favorite authors, so of course I did. Totally loved it. Dark and messed up French, no, relationship, not a friendship. Ivy and Wes are never and forever an absolute hurricane, and you will get caught in their trap. It's great. It's absolutely great. Okay, another boarding school book, Dark Academia-ish. I talked about this on my most anticipated. This is The St. Ambrose School for Girls by Jessica Ward. This is pitched as Mean Girls meets We Were Liars. And I just love a boarding school book, you guys know. This is also pitched as Heather's meets The Secret History. I was like, wait, that first one I said was not great. So a coming of age novel where the secrets are devastating and deadly. So we have the odd girl out. She's going to get bullied by the queen bee, of course. Our odd girl out has her circle of friends. I think somebody dies. Everybody's going to have secrets. And the less I know, the better in this one. But the secret history meets Heather's. Heather's is one of my favorites. I know I mentioned that before. I have also mentioned that I am so deep in my 90210 rewatch. And I am so deep into my... I never stopped loving Shannon Doherty, but I'm reminded why I love her and her character in Heather's was by far my favorite. I definitely was Heather Duke. You know what I mean? Like I, like I related to her the most. I mean, I was, but I wasn't, but you know what I mean? Okay, I'm gonna move on. The next book I got is Going Dark by Melissa De La Cruz. So if you guys saw one of my vlogs where I shopped the book haul event at Barnes and Noble, I picked up two books. And these are them. So this is a YA mystery about an influencer culture. So an influencer named Amelia Ashley has gone missing. She shares everything online with her followers. And then we have her boyfriend. So the two of them went away on a little bit of a vacation. And Amelia doesn't return, but Josh does. So it says, Amelia abandons him in Rome. He has no clue where she went or why her blood got in his suitcase. Why won't anyone believe him? So we have a cast of characters. We are looking for the truth. Amelia's disappearance has captured the world's attention. And it says, what comes next? I'll let you know when I read it. <laughs> the next book I picked up is You Know Her by Megan Jeanette. So this one was pitched as, I want to say, Sharp Objects meets Killing Eve. Also things that I love every time I do a book haul. Ah, I don't, I don't know what to read next. So this is a gothic thriller about two women, a fledgling murderer and the cop bent on catching her. So there's all of your killing Eve of it all. And we've got bodies piling up. We've got suspects. We've got a cat and mouse thriller set in the backdrop of small town, Virginia. And it says it probes the boundaries of female friendship and the deadly consequences of frustration fermenting into rage. So I am definitely deep in a dark and messed up female friendship mode right now, which makes a lot of these books super appealing to me. Stay tuned. 
Okay, another dark and messed up book, which I have mentioned before. This is Delicate Condition by Danielle Valentine. So this is going to be the next American Horror Story season, apparently. But ignoring all of that, or lean into all of that, I read her YA thriller, How to Survive Your Murder, which I very much enjoyed. And it was way bloodier and more messed up than I thought it would be for YA which pleasantly surprised me. Definitely an homage to Scream and Slashers. This one sounds real disturbing. And it's funny, I had seen somebody's review on Instagram the other day, and they were like, first up, there's nothing delicate about this book, which I absolutely love. So this is about a woman who is desperate to have a family, and she is starting a grueling IVF journey. And it says she starts to suspect that someone is going to great lengths to make sure that never happens. Crucial medicines are lost, appointments get swapped, cryptic warnings have her jumping at shadows. And despite everything she's gone through to make this pregnancy a reality, not even her husband is willing to believe that someone is playing a twisted game with her. So her doctor claims she had a miscarriage, but Anna is convinced she's still pregnant despite everything the grave faced men say around her. So this is definitely, I'm getting a I don't know if they're gaslighting her, if they're doubting her, if they are just messing with her. I don't know. I don't want to know any more than that. But I think this is going to be real dark and messed up. And I am, of course, super excited about it. I'm just reading some of the blurbs on the back. But she, just based on the YA book that I read, is not afraid to go dark and messed up. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. I feel like I am really building my spooky season TBR big time. So the next one I have is your fault, you guys. This is Steve Cavanaugh's Kill For Me, Kill For You. I did not know that this book existed in the ether. So this is out in the UK now. It has not yet come out in the US. This is definitely a Strangers on a Train vibe. She will kill your worst enemy. All you have to do is kill hers. So a kind worth killing. One of my favorite, can we call it a trope? That kind of Strangers on a Train trope? I didn't even know this existed. I'm so excited. I, I was like, for half a beat, I was like, mm, I'll wait. And then I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm going to buy it now. So I have read 13 by Steve Cavanaugh. I have purchased multiples of his books that I haven't read yet, but there's another one in this haul. Wait for it. So in this one, it says, one dark evening in New York City, two strangers meet by chance. Over drinks, Amanda and Wendy realize they have so much in common. They both feel alone, they both drink alone, and they both desperately want revenge against the two men who destroyed their families. Together they have the perfect plan. If you kill for me, I'll kill for you. So based on 13, another author who is not afraid to go to all the deep, dark, messed up places. 13 is part of the Eddie Flynn series. I read that, that's book number four. I went right into that not realizing it was a series, so I very much think you can. This is actually a standalone book. So obviously you can dive into this one at any point. The other one I have though is part of the Eddie Flynn series. Hold on. Okay. Sorry. My legs are cramping here too, because I'm sitting on the floor. So the next one I have is the accomplice. So this one totally grabbed my attention. I don't remember where I don't, it doesn't even matter. So in this one, this is a serial killer book. This is part of the Eddie Flynn series, as I just said, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna read it. It's cool. I'm not reading them in order. I am breaking all of my own rules. So in this one, it says the most hated woman in America. The Sandman killings have been solved. Daniel Miller murdered 14 people before he vanished. His wife, Carrie, now faces trial as his accomplice. The FBI, the district attorney, the media, and everyone in America believes she knew and helped cover up her husband's crimes. So enter Eddie Flynn, our lawyer, and it says he won't take a case unless his client is innocent. Now he just has to prove it to a jury and the entire world that Carrie Miller was just another victim of the Sandman. So we're going to have a former FBI agent. We're going to have our serial killer and all of it. So I'm very excited. 13 also had a serial killer in it. And that book completely freaked me out because we got the serial killer's POV in that book. So I'll be very interested to see what he does with this one. I don't know which one I'm going to go into first. If anybody has read these, do you have a, let me know. Let me know which one you would vote up to the top of my Steve Cavanaugh list. Okay. Next book. I also talked about this in one of my vlogs. 
I warned you guys that I bought this one ahead of its US pub date. So this is The Mysterious Case of the Alberton Angels by Janice Hallett. So she wrote The Appeal, which I read a couple years ago and I absolutely loved. And this one has some culty vibes to it. it. Says the devil is in the details. Everyone knows the sad story of the Alberton Angels, the cult who brainwashed a teenage girl and convinced her that her newborn baby was the Antichrist. Believing they had a divine mission to kill the infant, they were only stopped when the girl came to her senses and called the police. The angels committed suicide rather than stand trial, while mother and baby disappeared into the care system. So we've got a true crime book nearly two decades later, and the Appleton, Alperton, Appleton is a street in Boston, so forgive me, Alperton, Alperton baby has turned 18 and can finally be interviewed, so our true crime author Amanda is trying to hunt down the baby and there's a rival author is just as smart and better connected and is also on the baby's trail so they're going to have to work together just if you guys have read the appeal then you know that was all like text messages and emails this is also just looking kind of all mixed media so it kind of looks like a script it looks like emails it looks like transcripts it looks like maybe a book within a book is happening here. The more I flip through this, the more I'm like, yep, now I want to read this one next. So hasn't come out in the U.S. yet. I will include that down below if I can find it, but love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, the next couple books I have were sent to me by publishers. So the first one was sent to me by Wednesday Books. This is called Secrets Never Die by Vincent Ralph. So this is a YA, I don't know if it's kind of like horror so it says, we call it the dark place. I don't know who built it or when, but for us, it's a sacred spot. So every year, Sam Hall and his friends hold funerals for their secrets in an abandoned hut in the woods that they call the dark place. But this year, their secrets are coming back from the dead to terrorize them. Sam is a former child star whose career went up in flames, literally, and no one, not even his best friend, knows why. His friends each hold a secret pertaining to that night, a secret they would all like to stay buried. Now someone from the past is blackmailing them with their dangerous secrets. Sam isn't sure whom he can trust, who's watching him, or how far he's willing to go to bury the past once and for all. So I did just start this book, like read the first chapter. I don't know if we flip between timelines because I haven't gotten that far. And if we see them as adults, or if this is strictly YA, I'll be honest, you guys, I'm not totally sure yet, but I do love the secrets coming back to haunt you kind of a situation. And then I don't know if I mentioned this ever. I don't know why I ever would have, but my friend and I, who I grew up with, she lived across the street from me and we used to, you know, go out and whatever, whatever. And we would walk home, small town, nobody was driving. And there was this one spot <laughs> where there were no street lights. And I don't know if it was like 40 feet, maybe, that you had to walk by. And we used to call it the dark spot. And this is the dark place. But so many times, I feel like I mentioned this when I talked about how I watched Pet Cemetery in my friend's basement one year and I was terrified. And I remember we were walking home that night and like running past it because we were convinced that like Zelda or someone lived in the dark spot. But unrelated to all of that, I found out this is a total sidebar, like a month or so ago, I was talking to my mom about some kind of true crime thing. I don't even know if we were talking about the Long Island serial killer that just got caught. But my mom was like, why are you looking outside when you have an unsolved murder in your own hometown? And I was like, what are you talking about? So years after I left, Around the corner from where the dark spot was, one of my friends from high school, her family built a house there and it was like a raging party house. And I'm telling you, like you went up our hill here and like the house was right there. Somebody was murdered in that house. They don't live there anymore. I don't know if it's the next person they sold it to, but a woman was murdered. Nobody was ever convicted of it. There were some suspects. She had a whole bunch of messed up stuff in her background. I think the mailman found her like a week later I have questions. I have questions. Okay. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so the next book I have, speaking of police investigation, is A Game of Lies by Claire McIntosh. So this is the second book in the Fionn Morgan series. She is a detective inspector and it says they're playing to win. They have everything to lose. So The Last Party was the first book. I absolutely loved it. I loved it so much. I love the humor. I love the investigation. I love the pairing of the different police officers. I loved the small town vibes. I loved the rich people behaving badly. Loved it. 
So in this one, we are following like a reality TV show. So we have a group of people stranded in the Welsh mountains, seven reality show contestants who have no idea what they've signed up for. Everyone has a secret, and if the other players can guess the truth, they won't just be eliminated, they'll be exposed live on air. Why would anyone sign up for this TV show? The stakes are higher than they ever imagined, and they're trapped. The disappearance of a contestant wasn't supposed to be part of the drama, so our detective Fionn Morgan gets called on in, and she has to put aside what she's been watching on TV, because she's watching the reality show along with everybody else, and she has to find out who these people really are, knowing she can't trust any of them. So I'm very intrigued by this. And you guys, not that you need a reason to buy a book, but this is the UK cover. Look at the naked cover. Look at the naked cover. Look at the naked cover. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Our friends in the UK know what they're doing. Our friends in the US could learn a thing or two about how to create a beautiful book. I'm just saying. I'm also kind of saying that someday, <laughs> I hope, go back and shop in person and pick up a whole bunch of books. But anyway, very excited for this. Book number two, not out in the US yet, or maybe it's out like on audio here, but the book book I don't think is out here yet. Details will be down below. All right, uh, another book that came from a publisher from Berkeley. This is Vampires of El, El Norte. I hope I'm not butchering that by Isabel Cañas. So she wrote The Hacienda, which I have not read yet, but I've heard great things about this and I'm super excited. So Dennis from Scared Straight Reads, Abby from Crime by the Book, both of were raving about this book. And then when it showed up, I was like, oh, wow, this feels fateful, doesn't it? So this is Vampires, which is so not my go-to other than Angel from Buffy. A, a historical fiction, 1840s Mexico. So it says the daughter of a rancher, Nina knows a thing or two about monsters. Her home has long been threatened by tensions with Anglo settlers from the north but something more sinister lurks near the ranch at night, something that drains men of their blood and leaves them for dead. Something that once attacked Nina nine years ago. So I don't wanna read more than this, but it's there's a character named <laughs> Nestor. So he believes that Nina is dead. It says he's been on the run. I'm not gonna read anymore, I'm gonna read more. Nestor has been on the run. He thought Nina was dead. He's been dealing with his grief ever since, moving from ranch to ranch. But no amount of drink can dispel the night terrors of sharp teeth. No woman can erase his childhood sweetheart from his mind. So when the U.S. invades Mexico in 1846, the two are brought abruptly together on the road to war. So I am very interested in this. When people whose opinions I completely value rave about a book, and I want to say Abby said this is her favorite book of the year, you know my antenna is way, way up. So thank you, Berkeley. Excited to check this one out. Stay tuned, you guys. I will tell you all about it. And then I actually have two more books that were gifted to me. So if you guys saw my most anticipated books of September, then you would have seen that I partnered with Book of the Month again, which I'm so super excited about. So the first book I picked up is The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin. This is a woman who buys a murder house for a pretty penny or no she buys it for cheap not for a pretty penny because who wants to buy a murder house but our main character in this book sarah who is a therapist and self-help writer is trying to escape a lot of things from her own past including her failing marriage and my favorite line in the blurb of this book is good thing that nobody in her town knows that sarah's past is as tainted as the blood stain on her bedroom floor so all she wants is to live in a great place with a great house and good neighbors, but it says with every passing moment, Sarah's life spirals further out of control. Here for it, new to me author, excited, perfect for spooky season. And then the next one I have is Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll, which is totally next up on my non-TBR TBR. This is based on real life events of Bundy about the sorority house murder in Tallahassee, about a woman who went missing four years earlier in Seattle, and about the two women who are questioning how this murderer made it across the country and who are asking questions that nobody wants asked and who are looking for answers and who are not on board with the media's presentation of this guy as the Kennedy killer and this all-American killer and all these people who are raving about Ted Bundy. This is about the women who are seeing past the media's glorification of who this man really was. So we get some dual timelines in this. It says we get a letter that brings our two women together in the present. I have heard nothing but amazing things about this. So 
stay tuned because I'm very excited to read this one. And then the last book I actually picked up at the Barnes and Noble book haul online because I wound up pre-ordering Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross, which comes out in December, which is the sequel to Divine Rivals. And then I pre-ordered the next John Grisham book, The Exchange, which is the sequel to The Firm. And in order to get free shipping, you needed to spend like $35. So I needed to add something else to the pile, or maybe it's $40 <sighs> breathing through it. I got it ends at midnight, but Harriet Tice. So this is one of those books where I feel like I kind of, like it rang a bell when I saw it, but I had to look it up. And then I looked it up and I was like, well, duh, of course I wanna read this book. So the blurb on the front is Lisa Jewell. I was listening to, sidebar, an interview with Riley Sager, a podcast, and he was talking about being asked to blurb books and who blurbs his books. They were talking about Stephen King putting him in the stratosphere with Final Girls. And he was like, I don't believe that blurbs sell books. And I wanted to be like, Riley, <laughs> they do for me. If I see an author that I love blurbing a book, I'm like, oh, well, it must be amazing. John Mars blurbed it, Ellery Lloyd, Sarah Pinborough, and Alex Michaelides. That was enough for me, but let me tell you what it's about. It is New Year's Eve is what it's about. And the stage is set for a lavish party in one of Edinburgh... In Ed <laughs> it's New Year's Eve and the stage is set for a lavish party in one of Edinburgh's best neighborhoods. It's a moment for old friends to set the past to rights and to move on. The night sky is alive with fireworks and the champagne is flowing, but the celebration fails to materialize because somebody at this party is going to die tonight. Yes, 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 yes. Midnight approaches and the countdown begins, but it seems one of the guests doesn't want a resolution. They want revenge. So I believe this is about two friends who did something real bad in the past. And I think one of them wants to come clean and maybe the other one doesn't. She has written several books. So Blood Orange is the other one. That's her first book that I saw a whole bunch of stuff around. Cause of course, down the rabbit hole I went. And I was reading the blurbs of all of her books. And now I'm like, is this the dark and messed up female friendship one? Is it Blood Orange? Is it both of them? I don't really know. I'm gonna find out. So Lisa Jewell tells me to read a book. I'm gonna read a book. I'm such a sucker, you guys. I am such a sucker and I hear it and I'm fine with it. And that's all the books. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is kind of shameful, but it's okay. We're all friends here. There's no shame in this game. There's just not enough time to read all the books. So let me know. Let me know about the Steve Cavanaugh's. Let me know about any of these. Let me know what you have picked up lately. And stay tuned here because when I do read these books, I will be telling you guys all about them. But thanks for watching. And I will see you guys in another video really soon-ish. I hope, I think, I'm sure. I don't know. I'll see you when I see you guys. Bye.